This is uh, Trump was interviewed on Wayne Allen Root's uh, book closet. I don't know what his little thing is. He got a uh, he's got his little book Trump Rules over here. He's got a picture of him with Trump, and shockingly, he was able to talk Trump into giving the thumbs up, which is amazing. Um. There we go. Yeah, it was Wayne Allen Root's voice. And I was like, who the fuck has a... That sounds whiny and nasally like Don Jr. What the heck? So let's jump in. This is... Uh, tr hold on. Uh, 30 here. Where's... Yeah, so Trump did an interview with him. And I don't know why it had jumped uh, forward at this. Wayne Allen Root exclusive interview. Because Trump will only give interviews to guys with multiple pictures of him in their office. Yeah. So, um, this is, uh, yeah, he's on RAV. This is the top, Wayne, something, to, Root's top 10, Wayne's top 10, something this show, uh, top 10 with Wayne Allen, I don't know. It's a countdown, and we're at obviously number two because Trump is talking. But let's, let's hear this interview, and then we'll uh, check back in with, with Junior, obviously, we've been told to divert by the by the internet gods. Here we go. Wayne Allyn welcome back, and we've got on Real America's Voice TV Network and my show, America. And by joke, uh, does everyone have a a, a coke a, like coke hole in their in their hard palate in Trump world? Does everyone? His top ten countdown. A great honor today. It's relatively a brand new show. It's relative. So he's not on my very first show but he's on the first month of my new show and I consider him a great friend and the great. Yeah, I, I like, yeah, total win, bro. His president of my lifetime, one of the great presidents in America's history, the greatest economic president for sure. No, not even close. In America's history, we've never had, nope. had anyone as good as him for the economy and job. Yeah, we have like fucking everyone. Literally Biden is trouncing everyone on job growth. Even after you count for the, Jobs just returning after COVID. Jobs and uh, black and Hispanic unemployment. Amazing guy. Hold on. M if I may. Let's see if I get the, where is it? Uh, this is this uh, 2021. Hold on one second. Let's see if I can find the news one on it. Uh -huh, da -da. And 60 days. Da -da 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 -da. Well, here you go. I'll, I'll, this is the easiest one. Here you go. Uh, quit it. Um, unemployment rate among Hispanic workers dropped sharply in September, but declining labor force participation indicated fewer eligible result, uh, adults found employment or searched for work. Unemployment rate fell from 3.8% from, uh, to 3.8% from 4.5% 3 from 4 in August. Look at the labor force participation dip from 661 to 668. Six to 66.1, so a 0.7% labor participation drop, but a full, almost a full point in unemployment drop. Okay. Um, unemployment rate among Hispanic workers dropped sharply in September, but also due to fewer eligible adults uh, looking for a job. Hispanic worker, workers saw their unemployment rate fall to 3.8%. Broken down by gender, unemployment declined to 3.2 for uh, Hispanic males over 20 and 3.6 among females. The decline is much uh, is much bigger than the one seen at the country level. The government said the overall jobless rate fell to 3.5 from 3.7. It's lowest since uh, July. A total of 263,000 jobs were created last month, less than a Dow Jones forecast 275. Um, adjusted, there you go, black, Latino, and white workers in the United States. There we go. So black still the highest. It's 5.8. Where are we? This is 2021. Does it go back further? I guess it was Source Bureau of Labor Statistics. Okay, we're not going to be able to find the chart in there. Hold on. 
Uh, it tracks how many people are employed or searching for work. It fell to 66.1, 66.8 in August, indicating fewer individuals are finding employment or searching for work as the employment to population ratio tracking the proportion of population dipped to 63.5. That declined from 4.5 to 3.8. While really significant, has to be tempered by the fact clearly Latinx <laughs> workers withdrew from the workforce, meaning like women didn't have to work in most of these cases. But here we go. So not, by the way, lower than during Trump. This number 45 and number 47, Donald J. Trump, the president of the United States. President Trump, how are you? I'm very good, Wayne. Thank you very much. It's nice to be on your weird little uh, FaceTime phone graphic. Yeah, I like, you know, everyone calls you 45. I want to call you 47 because we're... Uh because uh, you're going by IQ points or lost without you, man, in two years, we're lost. We need you so badly to come back. Mm -hmm. back. I, I wanted to open the interview by telling you that I just um, did a commentary in honor of you being on the show. Wow, that was sweet. I'm sorry we missed it. And it's called How Different Would America Look If President yeah. Trump Was Still the President of the United States? So um. Well, we'd have uh, probably a million more dead. So why don't I open with that question? How different would things look if you were president? Well, he can't see you, Wayne. It would have been uh, a much different place. Right now, I think we've never been so embarrassed. I, I think we've never been so low. With yeah, I, I think we're okay. I mean, we had we did have a civil war over slavery. You know, Vietnam. We literally during the civil rights era. Dogs being sicked on civil rights campaigners. <laughs> the uh, uh, all the NFL games went off without a hitch this weekend. I'm just saying. What happened in Afghanistan? So there's number one that would have never happened. We were getting out of Af Afghanistan, as you except staying. No, I was down to very few troops, but we were going to keep Bagram. Right. So we were going to leave and stay. And leave it. Leave it to Trump. And to pull out and leave it in at the same time. Because that's right next to China where they make their, this one hour away from where they make. Where they make the, uh, where Xinjiang slave labor picks cotton to be used in Trump ties. Nuclear equipment. <laughs> equipment. Mm hmm Yeah. They, yeah, they, uh, the little container that, uh, that Doc Brown had in his in his van right there i mean right it's right it's there you can't i mean you want to be nearby so you go ah, 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 ah. to leave bagram this billions and billions we spent on it and we gave it to china because they're now occupying it no they're not but that would have been much different we would have left afghanistan with with dignity with great and never left with strength so that's a and never left. big thing you wouldn't be in uh, ukraine uh, you'd have uh, you no. We, that's definitely true. You would have just let Russia attack. You'd be energy independent and even energy dominant. I we are energy dominant, but we're not the only game in town. So Nobody last, is. Uh, just reported that in uh, in uh, let's see, two and a half, three years ago, we were bigger than Russia in terms of energy. We were bigger than Russia and bigger than Saudi Arabia. Soon we would have been bigger than them both combined. So we we're. Because they were cutting their energy, they were in a they were in a fight to destroy the American shale oil revolution. That's what that whole like pissing contest was about. They teamed up on us and made you cut production. To be energy dominant and energy independent, we wouldn't have inflation. We wouldn't have crime like. Yeah, we would. We would have inflation post COVID. You're not ducking it. The rest of the world has inflation. You think the United States would be the only place that doesn't? We're the biggest consumer populace on the fucking planet it is we would continue to build our military and we'd have yeah we're we're cool have a border that was stronger than ever before well a slat fence um i i don't know why they're fucking with trump right now by putting a picture of the slat fence up which looks like you could if your head's relatively reasonable in size you could just step through it we had the strongest border in the history of our country thanks covid and uh, they opened it up and they've destroyed, I tell you, they've destroyed. No, we haven't. Destroying our country. Oh, my God. Look at the millions. Look at them. It's terrible. They're just coming across all these military age males. They're poisoning our country. Oh, my God. With We've never had a situation. A blonde lady 
from from Argentina. Situation like this, and throughout the world, we're no longer respected. We have a yeah, we are. Uh, we are a fa- well. I, I I will say that we are not respected by Xi Jinping, Kim Jong Un, Vladimir Putin, and MBS. Like those four people aren't fans because of this whole democracy thing. Failing country right now. A failing country. No, we're not. See, you, you are a columnist, and you didn't know it, because I write a nationally syndicated newspaper column, and the one I wrote today, an hour before this interview, literally, how different would America be if President Trump was still president? Oh, my God. This guy makes Brian Kilmeade look like Rasputin. You just summed up the whole column. You and I... Yeah, because a simpleton could do it, dummy. I wrote the same columns. Rootforamerica.com. The irony of that title. So, good job, President Trump. You can, you can yeah, write my columns you, it's now. Sad. <laughs> it's easy to do, but it's sad to do, Wayne. Very sad to do. It's very easy to do your job, Wayne, but it's sad to do your job. You know, it's sad that I would have to even do your job, Wayne. But It's, it's easy to do, but it's very sad yes. to do. And, and listen, I started the column by saying, and you'll like this because I'm, no, you won't. I'm one of the people in America who has never wavered for a second. They stole the election. This never should have happened. Mm. They st- Terrible. Oh, Wayne, Wayne, Wayne. Why didn't I come on your show earlier? Oh, I'm sorry. Let me loosen my... Hold on. That's the sound of my zipper, Wayne. Stole right. the election from you. We all know that. But anyway... No, we don't. Let's move on. Look. Yeah, just drop that and then, and then, uh, it was stolen and you're really a winner. Well, just, just so you know that I'm, I'm on the team. I know the password. I did just to put it a little, three months uh, and I'm a pretty. Just to put even a little strength into that, it was rigged, it was stolen. <laughs> That's, excuse me, hashtag rigged and stolen. Um, well, they attempted to rig it. Um, the, uh, you know, the Trump what? campaign did. Uh, I'm just saying, yeah, it's true. They they attempted to rig the election because they were like, um, you know, we're never going to win. Look at the polls. We're going to have to buy a bunch of votes. And so they tried. What? It's true. And yet, meanwhile. All right. And then on top of it, you see all this stuff with the FBI telling Facebook and others don't talk about a 17 point difference. The pollsters said it would have made. He's talking about the Hunter Biden laptop, which doesn't exist, but without actually remembering to mention what the fuck he's talking about. But it does. I mean, honestly, if you're watching Wayne Allen Root, it's the, this is all shorthand anyways. There's like this Trump rally goer shorthand. That's even peanuts. Forget even that stuff. It- yeah. 17 point win in an election is peanuts. It was a rigged election and it's a disgrace. So we have open borders. We have rigged elections. No, we don't. Elections. No, we don't. We don't have voter ID. <clears throat> um, I, again, I want a universal federal government ID for everyone, but Republicans think it's the mark of the beast and we can't have it. Ridiculous. Yes, you are ridiculous. That part we agree on. Thank God. And that, and by the way, that- And by the way, I just wrote that in a column about you. You could do, why don't you just, I'm going to leave. You just do it. I'm just- was the plan they rigged it and stole it because you were making america great again yeah that was it that was the whole thing you were the i mean granted people were dying hand over fist and and uh your your art of the deal signed a deal with the saudi arabia and russia to cut oil production in america and mexico till april of 2022 but i was like and And they don't want america great again well then why are we why does the Chips and Science Act reshore technology back to the United States and keep the Chinese from getting it? Why are ma- why did why were there twenty two thousand manufacturing jobs added last month? If Biden is trying to ruin the country, he's doing a really fucked up job. This is a yeah. purposeful attack, purposeful communist radical attack. On- oh, a pur- purposeful communist. Radical, a radical communist or a communist radical? I don't, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I should know the difference. America to just destroy it. And as soon as they stole it from you, they set about destroying the country. It's amazing. They, they took 
They, we had these. We had great unemployment numbers. They cut those in half. We had a great deficit. They cut that in half. It's like they're cutting everything in half. They're going to take America and cut it in half. And they're doing a fantastic job. You know, you did a fantastic job making it great again and saving. Okay, this is gross. They're doing a fantastic job. Sadly, tragically, destroying it. I think we're on the verge of World War Three. What do you think about that? All right. I think we're on the edge of World War III. I can't wait till you're back in office. You could just be the greatest president of smoldering rubble ever. Enemies cannot believe what's happened to our country. Leadership, which is at the top of its game. You know, these are smart people, President. Oh, my God. She and Putin are at the top of their game is what he's saying. She, every one of them. They no. No, they're fucking well not. Okay, first of all, let's just do this real quick. Hold on. Uh, just top of their game, right? Um... Here, here you go. Here's top of your fucking game, dummy. Oh, God, you guys know this aggravates the shit out of me. Um, here you go. China holiday spending plunges to seven-year low as zero COVID batters consumer confidence. One, first of all, let's put aside the fact that Republicans think that the COVID lockdowns that are happening in China, look at this shit. Look at this guy with the gun and the fucking white suit and the blue tape. Um these guys, they think, the Republicans think this is America right now. This is happening in fucking America. That's what they think. And we're not. We're wide open. People are getting boosters. You're going to be fine. But in China, they're still doing full bore lockdowns. Holiday spending on during China's Golden Week has plunged to its lowest level in seven years. As broad COVID curbs discourage people from traveling or spending, while a darkening economic outlook continues to erode consumer confidence. China's economy is in bad shape and could stay that way for a while. Knock it off with the fucking, it's top of their game. It's nonsense. Xi Jinping is wearing a Mao suit because he's trying to cop some of the cred that Mao had with the Chinese people. He's terrible at this. This isn't even about like the ineffectuality of the, like, of, uh, Jiang Zemin or any of those guys like those guys look like top quality government professionals next to this fucking lunatic It's terrible all right what else Putin I I cut hold on um uh guard Moscow check this shit out you want to see top of your fucking game this is in the mirror UK Putin deploys Elite guard to Moscow amid fears of coup with military on high alert. This is Ukrainian intelligence saying this, so take it with a grain of salt. Claim an eight, and, and there have been some videos posted, but you can it's hard to tell from within Moscow what's really coming out. Yes, yeah, Putin to you. Putin. Vladimir Putin has deployed a special unit of guards to Moscow amid rising fears of a coup, Ukrainian intelligence sources have claimed. Intelligence officials said the elite Odon unit of the Russian National Guard is bolstering security around the Russian capital and that all military units are on high alert. This, and he pulled his little cabinet meeting together and, and put a, uh, like, they're powwowing right now and they need guards all around them so that the, uh, the group that he's pulled in that supports him doesn't get overrun by the by the ones that he's uh, that are on the outs with them now let's look at um iran protests right now remember uh um let's see da, 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 da. uh let's see da, 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 here you go iran couldn't be doing better right now Top of the game. Protesters in Iran over woman's death reach key oil industry. Workers at refineries crucial for Iran's oil and natural gas production have protested over the death of a 22-year-old woman. Dubai, you, uh, United Arab Emirates. Workers at refineries crucial for Iran's oil and natural gas production protested Monday over the death of a 22-year-old woman. Online videos appeared to show escalating the crisis faced by Tehran. They're doing great. I don't know. America's in total decline, right? How, how about North Korea? Shall we drop in on, uh, um, let's see, uh, Kim, let you go. Let's drop in, um, on, da, 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 besides their fucking saber rattling. Um, this, this is the state of, this is the state of the thing. 
Uh, North Korea confirms simulated use of nukes to wipe out enemies. They're, they're, they're launching empty rocket hulls to scare people. They're not, they're not testing nuclear missiles on their own land or testing the explosive power of them. They're not blowing them up in the fucking ocean like it's 19 fucking 55. Yeah, how the North Korean summer harvest go? Um, let's let's take a look. <laughs> Oops, hold on one second. Uh, news. <laughs> Is this, why does this screen want to... Yeah, they're firing empty rockets, for fuck's sake. Uh, why is this... Good Lord, the AP news on this is terrible. Hold on. Food supplies. That's why. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're doing great. Why we know even less than usual about North Korea's food situation. Even in a normal year, North Korea's food situation would be difficult to parse. This year, however, it's even more trying than usual, largely due to the North Korean government's response to the global pandemic. Since the country closed its border in early 2020, international humanitarian institutions such as the UN, food and agricultural organizations, the FAO, Schwartz, and the World Food Program have been unable to conduct on-site monitoring missions. Furthermore, trustworthy information from inside the country has been even harder to come by due to tighter border controls. Um, it's crucial to examine how we know, okay, blah, 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 what the data tells us. Considering these limitations, what does the available data suggest about current and future food supplies in North Korea? Since the country's rainy season runs from July to September, we won't have a clear picture of the next, of the exact situation for several weeks. The predictive and historical data we have in the past year paints a mixed and somewhat concerning picture. According to the WFP, the lack of sufficient snow in the past winter poses a significant problem for this year's winter crops, sown in October, harvested in June, and current spring ones. Ideally, there would be enough snow in the winter that would supply the fields with water when it melts. Snow coverage also protects winter crops from freezing. Snowfall this past winter, as estimated by a satellite imagery, was markedly below average, resulting in a poor water supply for the winter, spring, and summer crops. At the same time, while snowfall was, significant, snowfall was significantly below average, it was, according to the WFP, slightly better than the extremely dry 2020-2021 crop year. So it went from bad to slightly less bad, but still less than they need. That's just his best friends. They can't believe what's happened to our country. They can't even believe it. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Like, I can't believe what happened to the Steelers last weekend. And you couldn't make this up. You couldn't. You are making it up. Make it up. That You are making it up. We're not drilling for Did you see 99% we are drilling, drilling. of the leases are now dead? The lease. 99% of the leases are now dead. Leases that were you know, that were Incredible. drilling their hearts away. Uh, they were drilling their hearts away. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm all a flutter. Every time one of those giant drilling machines goes down into the Earth's surface, I just, I get a tingle right up my, my kielbasa. It's just wonderful. How they, and I was drilling my heart away, and then these government, government revenues roll in here and take this away from me. What the fuck is he talking about? Make it up that we're not drilling for oil. Did you see 99? We're not drilling for oil. 99% of the leases are now dead. 99% of the leases are now dead. The leases that were, you know, that were Incredible. drilling their hearts away. In mm, they were drilling our hearts. I'm sorry, not hearts. Mm -hmm. Environmentally very friendly. They were environmentally very friendly. And now we're throwing windmills up all over the place, killing our birds, killing our... Yeah, we just... We're basically... Uh, all the new Biden windmills are based on the Nutribullet methodology. And they just... I just think they shouldn't have put the chop blades on. That was the mistake. Our horizons, killing our landscape. Killing our horizons. Because nothing is... You know what's beautiful when you look out over the horizon and you see oil pumps? That's... That's, there's a certain naturalistic beauty to them. It's like a, it's like watching a, a robot dinosaur bobbing for apples 
um, with the skin blown off. It's like the Terminator version of a dinosaur, just up and down and up and down. Instead of these big, disgusting, white, pristine, slow-moving windmills. Destroying home values. You know, if you're near a windmill, if you can see those windmills, especially when they start to rot and rust after five years, and then they get... <laughs> yeah, it is. It, like, we just... The whole thing's awful. I, I've driven by some of them. The ones in California that have been up for like 20 years, horrible. Abandoned and nobody does anything about it. They're abandoned and nobody does, like Jesus Christ, where did this asshole go? This is, this is how uh, the Howard Hughes slippage starts. This fucker is just in that tower at Mar-a-Lago, just like peeing into mason jars, growing his nails out and staring at cockroaches on the fucking walls. Does he go anywhere? Like, basically, he thinks if it isn't a golf course, it's a cesspool. But if you start seeing that your home value goes down by 50%. Again, I don't even know where the... Where the fuck... This comes from... Does he... Okay, look. If you add a windmill to a golf course... It becomes putt-putt. And I'm sure you can't charge the Saudis the same amount of money for a putt-putt golf course as you can for one of the big fancy live ones. I'm sure. But the rest of us aren't going, Ugh. How in the fuck? I, I honestly don't know where this comes from. Where do, where do home prices drop by 50%? And by the way, m most of the time, and this might be where he kind of gets it in his little, like, Adderall addled mind. Which, by the way, there's a shortage of Adderall. Watch for a, a swift drop-off in attention span from Trump over the next couple of weeks. They literally are running out of Adderall um, because people are using it for, I guess, recreational or school use when they don't technically need it. Anyway, so I'm going to guess that most of the time uh, when they put in these big windmill farms, they're out in areas where the houses aren't all that expensive. They're not putting them in Manhattan. They're not putting them in these really fancy areas. They're putting them in areas where there's lots of open field that isn't good for farmland. And so home prices there versus downtown Chicago or some shit are going to be half as fucking much. They're not down because they're there are windmills nearby. They're down because it's the fucking sticks. It's a disgrace what's happening. I don't know what's happening. Wind turbines, not windmills. Yes, yeah, true. Happened to our country. It's also the most expensive. That's why if you if you want to, uh, Dutch houses are fifty percent cheaper <laughs> than uh, the rest of Europe because of all the fucking windmills. Energy there is. It's many. By the way. Who wants to uh, pool our money and uh, put a, a bunch of windmills near Mar-a-Lago, maybe offshore, and then buy Mar-a-Lago for half price? Offer him half price for it. See if he'll take it. Times more expensive than what we're doing right well. What we were doing, we're not doing much of it now, as you know. No, we are. I mean, again, just lies. Well, and, and look at the result, President Trump. First of all, you got gas prices catapulting now above seven dollars again in california yep. and all of all of the by the way um i i haven't reminded people of this in a long time uh let's see california Let's see if I can find that. Let's see. Oh, let's see. Yeah. Let's do seven. It's an old one. Uh, mm -hmm. Hold on. Uh, Eleven. Okay. Hold on.
Uh, yeah, here it is. Okay, so this is uh, <clears throat> um, seven dollars uh, a gallon for gasoline. Sadly, it's true. Um, premium going seven fifty nine. Premium going for eight fifty. Meanwhile, um, during the Trump administration in July of twenty nineteen, that same gas station was selling gas for eleven dollars and seventy five cents for a single gallon of gas. That was during Trump. During Trump, you could pay $11.75 for gas in California. During the Trump administration. Not now, but during Trump, $11.75. In July 2019, in Salinas, California, peak price, Americo gas station in the town charged $11.75 for a single gallon of gas. It's because the nearest one is 40 miles away and they gouge everybody and it's hard to get gas to them. So they're not just doing it to be dicks. Um, for the country, they're up. And then you've got electric bills up by a third to double all over the country. The middle class is being... Mm, no. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Hold on. Let's see. Maybe let's see if he goes. He grabs him away. Uh, could be a uh, shaggy story, large bill, the latest inflation flashpoint. Gas prices turn late, okay, 40 cents, yeah, 384. Um, where's this one? It's four weeks ago. I'm trying to find something closer, uh, that isn't predictive. In Arizona, secret campaign spending around the secret of six, use power price raise. Um, yeah, here's Bloomberg. This is four weeks ago. This is okay. Um, how much did he say? Hold on, let me let's run this back. California and all of all over the country, they're up. And then you've got electric bills up by a third to double all over the country. A third to double all over the country. Electric uh, electricity price rise of fifteen point eight percent is the highest since August eighty one. Total energy index slipped five percent from July, led by gasoline bills. August electricity bills for U.S. consumers jumped the most since 1981, gaining 15.8% from the same period a year ago, uh, according to U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. Natural gas bills, which crept up last month after dipping in July, surged 33% from the same month a year ago. So this is year over year. Labor data, which, will, by the way, the extra 10% will be because of uh, natural gas and in the world market. Uh, Labor data release out of our broader show slipped for a second consecutive month because of lower gasoline and fuel oil prices. Even with that drop, total energy costs are still about 24% above August 2021 levels. This is what he's kind of talking about. This is uh, 20 cents a kilowatt uh, here. So this is 14.8 cents a kilowatt versus... Where's Trump's last one? Third... It's terrible. Look at this. Look at this jump. Look at this. It's terrible. It was at 13.2. Now it's 14. Oh my God. I, I like, I got to, sorry, I got to close this down. I got to shut down the lights. Uh, we're not going to be able to the make middle it. middle class is being wiped out. It, no. This is not a coincidence, right? Yeah. The, the Biden administration is trying to destroy the middle class on purpose because... Communism. I think communism, right? Well, wait, I had the strategic reserves almost topped out. And then I made this incredible deal when oil was at its lowest. Where The strategic oil looked like shit when Trump was in office. It's all dusty. And who left the tops uncapped? I was buying it for $20 a barrel. And now it's, you know, it's going to be probably $130 very soon. Based on <laughs> what they're saying. But I was buying it for 20 and the humor of the Democrats stopped that final sale, but I got it very close to topped out. Because you were trying to pay more for it than it was worth. 
first time in 52 years. And what happens? They're using that, which is really meant for warfare. It's meant for we're we're kind of in a war, an economic war with Russia specifically in the, in the Saudis. For, you know, security for our right. country. They're using it to lower gas prices prior to the. How can you geek out with tech amendments for one morning show? Yes. Oh, you mean like the Chips and Science Act, that kind of thing? Or what do you mean? But yes. The election. The day after the election, they'll stop that. And you're going to see gasoline go up to a number that you wouldn't believe. Right. This is that this happened. The same thing about COVID numbers in 2020. Like, remember uh, on, on November 5th, you weren't even going to hear about COVID anymore. But as soon as Biden gets elected, he's just going to, ah, fuck it. Everybody go it's back incredible. out. Also, by the way, they were going to keep lockdowns to control us all. And masks are just a way for the world elites to make you behave. But also on November 6, 2020, they were going to blow off uh, everything and just go back to normal. Like it, it's just whichever talking point works with whatever group of people and the his crowd, each one of them has kind of like a, a tuning fork of which storyline really works for them. And they just shut off the second, like which whichever one doesn't match, they just don't hear it when he says it. Like like leaving uh, Afghanistan, but staying in Bagram, but keeping Bagram. There's no way you keep Bagram after you told the Taliban we'll leave. At, we're getting everybody's getting out and not have our soldiers fired at forever. Well, all, all of this sounds terrible. Oh, advancements. But... Oh, yes. On v advancements. Yes, absolutely. Jacqueline, I would love to do that. Nothing compares to, to you. Nothing compares to you. It's been seven hours and you know, like after he lost the election, there were a shit ton of Trumpers sitting in their car in the fucking parking lot or in their driveway of their, uh, you know, the parking lot of their apartment building. And that song came on and they're like, oh my God, this is so true. It's been seven hours and 15 days since you took your love away. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, Wayne. I can eat my dinner in a fancy restaurant. Nuclear right. Armageddon. Now I. I don't know. I I think his singing voice might be better than mine. <laughs> to quote Bankman, "What a lovely singing voice you must have." Been saying but for weeks. I don't know if I have a, do I have, oh, I don't have a ball filter on this. Hold on one second. I might. Give me a second. Let's see. Back here. Open this. Go back there. Take this. Take this guy. Back here. Go there. Take here. Hold on. I think I should have one in here, shouldn't I? The only one I have, hold on. All right, now, God, now you've made me look for it. Hold on. Since you've been gone, I can do whatever I want, but nothing. I said nothing could take away these blues Cause nothing compares Nothing compares to you This is gonna freak people out. If I hold still and you don't see my hair flicking in the background, this is gonna... Weird. People are gonna go, Oh my God, he shaved his head. I have never shaved my head. I'm not against it. I feel if this is what my head looks like shaved, I'd be totally for it. It's hard to sing. I love that song. Yep. Lex Luthor. Miss Tushbucker! I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Is that artist appropriation? I think so. I'd make a good Lex Luthor, I think.
Putin, huh? Hal Diesel, right? I am Groot. Don't shave your head, it won't grow back the same. I trust that it will. All right, anyways, back to where we were. These guys bullshitting. That Biden's getting us into World War III. Biden said yesterday, he agreed with me, that we're the closest... He's, he agreed with me, so he must be wrong. ...to nuclear Armageddon that we've been since uh, the Cuban... Thank you, Andrea. We're going to need a much bigger uh, push to get me in a, in a Marvel film. ...missile crisis. So, yeah. I, I mean, none of this would Did happen. Did he say that? I didn't China hear him. I mean, he... I, did he really say that? I didn't hear him. I, I don't really pay attention. I... I was uh, I was sitting in the uh, on the throne, uh, smelling my own brand. Did he what? Could have indicated what? something. I don't think he knows what he's indicating. Hey, look, we are hey, look, close hey, to look. World War Three, Sorry. and this will be the war of all wars because the weaponry is so unbelievably powerful. The nuclear is. Tell us all about. Tell us all about the nuclear. So powerful. This is an army tanks going back and forth, and it's not. I, is anybody? I don't know. I'm going to have to look this whole nuclear thing up. Plane shooting each other. This is... It's not? It's not planes shooting each other? It's a big deal. And and I'm telling you... It's okay. So it's a, it is a big deal. All right. You, the way they're handling it is so bad. And so we could bad. very well end up in World War III, starting with Ukraine. And then uh, the way they've handled it is so bad. It would have never happened if I was president. The election... It <laughs> wasn't rigged. This would not have happened. Ukraine and Russia would not be fighting. They did. No, uh, Russia would have won in a matter of days. We wouldn't have supported them and they would have taken Kiev in 48 hours like they planned to do. The fuck? All right. For the last fucking time. The Trump plan was in his second term, Putin was going to attack Ukraine and take it. And Trump would slow walk the American response until it was too late and we were negotiating from a point of weakness because they had already taken Kiev. That was the fucking deal. You can't do it in the first term because he would lose. People would go, oh my fucking God. He he let Russia do this. But when he's he can't get reelected again, then it's all fucking gravy. Then you just hand shit out for four years, you let Russia do this, and then it's Trump Tower Moscow, Trump Tower Dubai, Trump Tower Beijing, and on and on and on, like fucking bowling pins. Doesn't mean they'd love each other, but there's no way that they would be fighting. There's no way that... Yeah, they wouldn't be fighting because they'd already be fucked. Putin would have gone in. They actually taunted him, if you really look at it. Yeah, that's that's what they, they taunted him. How did they taunt him? They were, this is the uh, Ukraine shouldn't have wore that skirt argument that you hear from the tankies. Our country and our so-called leadership <laughs> mm -hmm. taunted Putin. and Yeah, we slapped him in the face with our dicks collectively. And he just didn't take it well. Sort of, right. I would listen. I'd say, you know, they're almost forcing him to go in with what they're... How? What, what, what example would this be? saying the rhetoric was so dumb look at the way we handled uh, kim jong-un and i have a very good relationship with him but we handled him and that mm -hmm. was going to be a nuclear war that would have happened if i didn't if i didn't go in then i'm telling you if we if no uh we're we're finding out now that uh that you that uh just like russia north korea is a paper tiger obama had another year well, you would have a lot a lot less than that you would have ended up in a... Yeah, if, uh, if we'd have given Obama one more month, we would have been in a nuclear war with North Korea. That's the argument. Nuclear war with him. And, I and thank God, uh, Vice President Dennis Rodman stepped in. Got along with him great. So just one of the... Do you still? Do you, you guys still chat or... Those things. And, it all that, started and, with a crooked election. Well, and it, it wouldn't have happened if you were president, but now that it has happened... What do you do? What's the solution? What's going to happen? Yeah, great question. Wouldn't you go in and be the negotiator that made Totally. Yeah, go in there and and be there when Russia says, "Here's the deal. We're taking everything that we took and keeping it and fuck you, and if they try to take one more inch, we're going to nuke Kiev." And you go, "It sounds like a deal." Makes peace between Russia and Ukraine. Yeah, what does the peace look like? The, the piece uh, that looks a lot like 
um, forcing a rape victim to marry their rapist. With your negotiation skills. Because that's what they're talking about. That's, that's their idea of a peace deal. That's what Elon Musk is talking about in terms of Ukraine and Russia and Taiwan and China. No, fuck you, 100% no. Ask Poland. The reason why, and someday I'm going to marry that girl, the, um, the prime minister of Finland... When she said what she said, and some of you may have seen it, but let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Um, whoops. I can type. Hold on. Yeah. This right here. Hold on. Her. Which is just like... I mean, come on. It's just rude. Out of, out of the conflict. The way out of the conflict is to Russia to leave Ukraine. That's the way out of the conflict. Thanks. There you go. Russia to leave Ukraine. Oh, let me back it up. Way out of the out of the conflict. The way out of the conflict is to Russia to leave Ukraine. That's the way out of the conflict. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what, what kind? Of, are you out of your fucking mind? Finland has a bigger border with Russia than Ukraine does. And they, and they lost land like this before. And, and Russia's been drumming up like, you know, Finland is our territory too, now that you think of it. She knows that acquiescing to Russia and giving them this salami slice, just like Georgia, just like Chechnya, just like Moldova, is going to result in the deaths of 100,000 of her citizens. Easy. It's like, what? I mean, have it. I don't care. I don't even go to those countries in Europe. You can get us out of this mess right now. <laughs> no, he can't get himself out of his own fucking mess. Asshole. Trump doesn't have a house. Can I? All right. God damn it. This is I'm so used. I'm, by the way, uh, Jet. Thank you, my brother, for the headphones. I got him hooked up and now I'm. I'm not wired. Obviously, I've still got the microphone, but. I can move around a little bit and I keep forgetting because I'm worried I'm going to step on my cord. Um, Trump doesn't have a house. This motherfucker, first of all, he can't live in Trump Tower anymore. He's moved out. The the the, the building itself is, is relatively derelict and people are leaving in droves. But he lives in rentable rooms, formerly rentable rooms at Mar-a-Lago part of the time. And then he has to he has to go spend three months at a time in places like Bedminster and other places because he legally can't live there. And what the fuck is with? And I don't get this. Like, there's always been this. I have to say, a a feeling of mild trepidation after Democrats leave office. Now, when maybe maybe H. W. Bush, because I didn't really know much about where he was going to live after he left the White House, but like. Reagan had his ranch, and so you know that after he's done, he's going to go fucking back to the ranch. We know this. Same thing with uh, Midland, Texas, and, and George W. He had his little Midland fucking ranch. But after Clinton left, and after Obama left, there was a little bit of like, all right, these guys are, uh, there's a certain group of well-armed, psychotic right-wingers out there that hate their fucking guts and think they're part of a baby-eating pentaveret. So they're going to need some security. Where the fuck are they going to live? And so they went out and they had to buy a fucking house that they could afford. Some place that was, you know, safe enough that, you know, for them and big enough to basically run a, a presidency, a, a, a post-presidency out of. But they all went out and got one, right? They all went and got a fucking house. And they weren't billionaires. The idea was, it's like, okay, they sell some books. And I mean, you make money as the president, but it's not, you know, you're, you're not a millionaire when you walk out of there in theory anyways, unless you sell a book or some shit. Trump can't buy a fucking house. Why, why wouldn't you, in the case of, uh, you know, Mar-a-Lago, there are other houses. Let's hold on one second. This is a good check. I want to find this. Hold on. Uh, is, uh, um, where's uh, Mar-a-Lago? What's technically? 
Is it in Palm Beach County? Oh, I know it's 1100 Ocean Park. I don't know. What I, okay. Uh, let's see. Let's go. Simple, no house, no town. Yeah, West Palm Beach. That's what I thought. Okay. West Palm Beach, Florida. Um, okay. And then go, let's see. Price, no minimum, no maximum. Let's do massive bats. Five plus, four plus. I'm just maxing out the shit. Only houses. Uh, manufactured. Done. Um, and then uh, my, the newest. Price high to low. Okay. Let's see. Remove the boundary. So even... Um, okay. So there are... A guy's a billionaire, right? He's a fucking billionaire. That's what we're saying. Okay. So these are the houses... This is just Zillow around here. This is this area right here. This is the highest price one. Six beds, seven baths, 10,000 square foot home for sale on Jungle Road in Palm Beach. $62 million house right on the water. There's one for 59. Here's one for 54. Look at that land. Look how, look how big that is. Just put a fucking wall. Yeah, you buy the $54 million one. And you and you put a five million dollar security system around it. Here's this one it goes straight. It's got its own private beach and all this kind of shit right up against somebody else. There's thirty four million. This one's thirty one, right across from that. What a lovely view. Whatever the fuck that is. Twenty eight million for this guy. Brand new. Oh, they'll build you this one. This one's fresh. This is on uh, the the raised side of Jeffrey Epstein's place. Twenty eight five twenty five. Here's a $19 million. Look, chump fucking change for the Trumpies, right? Use Bitcoin, exactly. Oh, ch yes, Chip is upset he can't jump in my uh, lap as well. Um, 69 for this guy. Look at this one. This one, you could probably, this one's 69 for the price of this one. You could buy probably both of these properties and have a Mar a Lago of your own. 14.5 for this guy. Look at this thing. You got this one's got the freeway and you own this port across the street for 127. I mean, come on. 888 eight, eight. Look at this guy. Look at this little thing on a little What's this guy? Uh, on uh, it's two lots. It's up off the beaten path. It's like a little horse farm area for 85. Let's take a look at this little fucker. This is getting you know, look at look at pretty Look at the pretty houses. Look at this. There we go. We got to go this way, I think. That's it. Looks like my grandparents' house, only much bigger. Yeah, there you go. It's a horse farm with the stables and everything. He can, you know, keep playmates out there like uh, Reverend Gene Scott or just use these as snack storage areas. He'd have to pay his own electric bill. Touche, Nancy. Touche. Um, this makes me want to watch Reacher again. Um, oh, look, and you can, it's a little question thing. You can hose him down. This is, Trump could get spray tanned. He could use these to just spray tan himself and the keys are out of reach. So he can't make a break for it. Um, bridal holders, the room. This is where the elevator, the Jeffrey Epstein elevator goes. That takes you down below the earth. And he's got all this land and just put a fucking fence up around it for all the sports he doesn't do. It's all one level. But then he'd have to hire staff and he'd have to, you know, and, and I have to say, any if we get any cheaper than that, we're getting into like Hassan Abi and uh, Jimmy Dore territory. Like they can afford that. Fuck, he can't afford that. Each one of them could afford a $5 million house in this area. So he's got to clear 10. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of bullshit. Look at, here's, here's one with its own, like, this is one of those, it's on a golf course. I like that. A place for, for Trump. <laughs> yeah, this guy, Hassan could totally afford this. 
There you go. Look at that. Look at this. And, and he could let Melania pick out a lot of gauche French bullshit furniture and everything's gold leaf like an asshole. Bunch of instruments around that nobody plays. Hassan will buy an $8 million house and say it was for his mommy. Right. And then live there. And then write it off as a business. Um, by the way, I totally dig this place, but I would have to be like 20 years older to feel comfortable in it. When I'm 70, maybe, but no. look at that. Look at these knobs. So anyways, point being is this is $6.9 million. Compared to the $65 million house, that, that looks like a Hearst mansion. But he can't afford it. Trump can't buy a fucking house. He didn't have any money. And every, all the money he has, he pisses away. And if he used, if he bought a $25 million house while asking for his supporters to, uh, you know, to like support him during this time, they go, well, fuck you. You know, he sends you to save America pack and then you end up spending it on a $25 million house or a $60 million house. If Biden didn't have an ego in the way, he could send you there and I'll bet you could reason with Putin and... Yeah, I, as a, you know what? I think we should just try. Send, you should send Trump right now. Now he'll have to, you know, he'll have to sign one of those waivers that if he gets abducted, we're not going to, you know, kind of like when uh, when Holden Ford went to prison to meet Kemper. You know what I mean? You gotta you gotta write off one of those things, right? Oh, by the way, uh, I don't have a house that big. I I have a pretty modest house, and I work out of it. And uh, if, if you'd like to help me at all, and you love the show. Please like and subscribe, give a thumbs up, support the show. Those are all the, the, the free ways you can do it um, on YouTube. It does not cost you a dime. And if you have Amazon Prime, it won't cost you a dime on Twitch. Uh, like and subscribe. And of course, uh, Super Chats are very, 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 very welcome. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Lynette. Um, uh, thank you, Megan. I know it's Monday, but, you know, uh, every little bit helps. You can also become a patron for five bucks a month or you can do it annually or whatever. Venmo, all those things. If you feel like helping, that would be lovely. If you can't, please don't worry about it. I don't know how, like, this is the part I am comfortable with. This is the part, I'm not good at promoting the show. But when I do promote it, I do feel comfortable in saying, if uh, I will, I do other work too. I do shows, you know, and, and that kind of helps support the cost of doing this show um, as well. And I'm glad that that should make up um, for people who can't afford to super chat or do those kind of things. Like I, like uh, the whole purpose of this show is to chill people out and recognize that the world is going to keep spinning and these assholes are not going to be in power again, which they are not. End this tomorrow. Well, I got along very well with both uh, Zelensky and Putin. If <laughs> no, you blackmailed one and the other blackmailed you. It was like you were like in the middle of the human centipede and you were trying to get Zelensky to be sewn to the back. If you remember, Zelensky was very nice because when they asked him about the Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine hoax, that was the phone call. He looked at him, he said, what was wrong with the call? He did nothing wrong. There was no. Yeah, because you were still in power and it looked like you would you were actually you might get reelected. He couldn't chance it. Afterwards, he was a lot more forthcoming. Threat. I didn't feel threatened. You know, he could have done some deal where, oh, I was, you know, it was so terrible. He didn't. And he was very honest. And I appreciated that. You know, it's, uh, he was uh, doing something. He was basically telling the truth. It was a perfect. He was basically telling the truth. Perfect phone call. And he said it was a perfect phone call. So I get along. No, he didn't. I well with him. I respect him. He's a good man. And they are really, uh, boy, but they're really in the trenches. And I got, as you know, I got along very well with Putin. Had we not had that phony Russia, Russia, Russia hoax going all the time by... I would have a Moscow Tower by now. A bunch of sleazebags created and just, it was a creation. This guy's picking some youngish shots of Putin. He's not, he's not going for the modern ones. It's interesting. I always, I'm always curious when people put together a montage of people to, you know, and you go, who are they trying to make look good and who are they trying to make look bad? By the Democrat Party. Think of it. What the fuck is a perfect phone call, Salty Sylvester? Okay, there's a reason why Trump thinks it was a perfect phone call, and it is simply this. He knew he had to uh, manipulate Zelensky in an illegal way 
while never saying anything on the call that would legally move into the territory where he would get himself in trouble. So what he does is he'll tee up a conversation. Rudy will go over there and give the blunt language and say, if you don't give us this, you're fucked. I'm going to send Rudy over. You're going to talk to him. But we just need you to look into things and just... Da, da. And he thought, I didn't say the quiet part loud. I didn't say the part that Rudy's supposed to go over and say. I just said the tee up part and therefore it was perfect. Legally, I didn't cross the line. I didn't think during the conversation. I said, every, I went right up to the fucking line of threatening him and stopped. So you guys can't bust me for this. The problem was he also followed it up by trying to send uh, Rudy over there. And, and obviously the manipulative language was already in the, in the call itself. Um, so, but he believes he went right up to, yeah, the quid pro quo. He, he, he stopped short of what he thought would be an admission that he was seeking a quid pro quo. And Rudy would go over there and, and make the quid pro quo happen. That's why he thinks it was perfect. Because he said, he went all the way. Oh, thank you so much, Cynthia. That's why he thinks he went right up the line. That's why he thinks it was perfect. That's why the phrase perfect. Like, I did just enough threatening, but nothing they could legally get me on. That's what he thinks. Just for the record. That's why he keeps saying it. It was a creation by the Democrat Party and Hillary Clinton. They created that out of nothing. It was a nothing. It was a total false story. It was a fake story. Uh, we would have had a very nice relationship with Russia. Yeah, I would have had a tower there by now. Russia, but it was I would have been over there, you know, three times a month, barging in on 15-year-old girls while they change. Very tough under those circumstances. And they were phony circumstances, but I had a very good relationship with Putin. Again, and then what happened? And this would have never happened. Ukraine, in a million years, and even the other side admits if Trump was... No, they don't. President, it would Nobody admits that. Putin's been talking about doing this for years. This was not a matter of... Uh, of if, but when. Have happened. But, uh, you know, they create this phony narrative, this horrible phony narrative. Uh, they do a uh, dossier, a fake dossier, uh, paid for by the Democrat Party and crooked Hillary Clinton. And that went on for a long time. It went on for a long time. And it was. Uh, uh, sir, this is a Wendy's. It was a disgrace. And something should have happened. And the Republicans have to. Something did happen. Something did happen. He was impeached in the House. The Senate protected him because it was under Republican control. And um, it cost them the Senate, ultimately. And uh, and he got uh, drummed out of office. He lost. He lost. Where's Durham? Right. Oh, my God. Bob, the fucking, like, I put out a womp fuckity womp article of about Durham. Because Durham's last thing was this Danchenko um attempt and it's just going to fail. The whole thing's a fucking flop. They spent like $7 million. It's so embarrassing. They get smarter and they have to get tougher. You're not going to have a Republican party anymore. Now, well, you know, don't threaten me with a good time. Right. And, and by the way, right. And by the way, books. Wait, speaking of that topic, sir, um, this is a Barnes and Noble. You're not allowed to stream from here of the Republican party. Democrats have been Look at that. A uh, uh, hype train. Thank you so much, Funky Buddha. Everything on abortion. I'm, I'm here in Las Vegas, as you know. Oh, dear God. No, I, I don't know that. But now that I do know it. Oh, boy. Uh, you visit me from time to time here. Oh, is that the is that, is that effect? Is that is you? This is the first I'm hearing of it. Um, I was wondering. What your, why your phone was going off in the middle of the night, Wayne. And every single ad on TV by Democrats is abortion, abortion, abortion. It's against Adam Laxall abortion. It's yeah, it's because he front-loaded the Supreme Court to get rid of women's right to choose. And they fucking did it. It's against Joe Lombardo abortion. It's against our congressional candidate's abortion. Right. And you would think that's the only issue in the world. It uh, no, you wouldn't. You would say this is the single biggest motivating factor. Is it inflation more? No, it isn't. Important to the average American every second of every day. 
Yes, but the Republicans have not proven in any way that they would handle it better. And currently, while we're having a rough go of it, we're having a better go of it than the rest of the world is. And most people are fairly sensible about that. But most people also aren't going to trade two years of inflation around uh, giving Russia Ukraine or women's rights to ch uh, a woman's right to choose being thrown out the fucking window or indeed everyone's medical privacy. Then abortion. Crazy. So everybody agreed that that whole issue should have been brought back to the states, which it was. It was no, they didn't. It was actually. Uh, no, <laughs> literally, even among Republicans, they didn't believe that. Great achievement in many ways, according to a lot. You really have to have. This place murders little babies. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you before you were born. I set you apart. Jeremiah 1.5. Um, I knew you were, but when you were a tadpole before you were a bullfrog, a certain standard and you have to talk about it. By the way, that guy has a cross right there. Um, are they just waiting for someone to crucify? It's kind of a kid size cross, like a, like it, if I was one of those kids, I would be worried. You, I say you have to go with the exceptions. Ronald Reagan did. I did. Uh, yeah, no, that's not the case. Three exceptions, as you know, rape, incest, and the Agreed. health of the mother, the life of the mother. And you go with the three exceptions. Right. They're willing to go. Whoop, hold on. Was that an edit? That I did. The three exceptions, as you know, rape, incest, and the Agreed. health of the mother, the life of the mother. And you go with the three exceptions. Right. They're willing to go abort. See that? They cut something out of it. Abortion half the time of birth if you take no i don't know where the fuck this comes from other than i i guess um uh, when they were talking about uh, like a a non-viable fetus and that the parents have to deal with what happens with the fetus which will not survive on its own outside the womb do you resuscitate it or you just allow it to pass away naturally do you un you know do you pump it full of oxygen when you know it's fucking heart is on the outside of its body and it's just going to die in pain or or do you let it happen or do you abort the child inside the womb and that kind of decision that's that's what that's and it's a horrifying decision because most of the time women in this position were looking forward to having a fucking kid these are not this idea that uh, one of the most misogynistic aspects of this entire fucking argument is this idea that women in general if left up to their own devices will yank the the baby out of themselves on the final day of the pregnancy and bang its head on a table and go, I don't need this. Let's party. It's I, the I it's I mean, I guess it's rooted in the if it wasn't for Eve, we wouldn't be in all this bullshit kind of an attitude. But I that the idea that that's the kind of decision women are making at that point in their pregnancy is fucking gross. Take a look at that wacky right. governor they had in Virginia. That's what he's talking about. So this is about non-viable fetuses. And he's like, you just kill it after it comes out. He said you could kill the baby after birth. No, he didn't. So nobody. No, he fucking well didn't. They're talking about fetuses that are not going to be viable. They're not going to make it. And they might kill the mother in the process. Who wants that? So they're really the radical ones, but the problem is a lot of people aren't explaining it well. And yeah, the Republicans, that's thats what it is. They're radical and they want to, uh, I mean, the message is simple. Democrats want to kill babies after birth, which I know what you're thinking. That's, that's murder and it's fucking ridiculous. But no, that's what they want to do. It's just kind of a, and on a whim, like this, these hippie chicks. And they're like, I don't want to put it up for abortion. If I can't have it, no one will. Smack. And I don't know why people can't explain that to people and why people, you know, don't hear that and go, ooh, I'll never vote Democrat again. And so it's really the, the, the Republicans are just terrible at messaging. And I think having the exceptions is a very important thing. Well, uh, a big portion, uh, Carrie Lake doesn't agree with you. No, I, I agree with you. I'm just amazed that abortion can't be the only issue that you determine control yeah. of the United States House and it's Senate. Not. It's not abortion. It's the freedom of women in the culture 
and in the country. You are legally codifying men's rights to move from one state to another without ever having a problem. And you are saying, women, you are going to have different rights in every state you go to. So you, if I want to move and I'm not worried about it and I've had my kids or I don't, you know, I, 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 maybe I'll have one. I don't really care. If I, I'm a devil may care bachelor house bucks, man about town. I can move to any state I want because my, my rights are not going to diminish. And as long as I'm a person of means, even if my uh, significant other or, or in the case of, you know, Jason, what's his name, who used to work for Trump, eh? if you knocked up a stripper, you could drive her out of state to get it taken care of. Like, Or you could just, I think what he did was uh, he dosed her. He put the abortion pill in her fucking drink. You know, very Trumpy. That guy worked on Trump's campaign and is still a spokesperson for him. Weird. Um, randomly on Newsmax and shit like that. But um, if I wanted to do that as a male, I could totally do that. But women now have to go, I can't move to that state. Why? Because if I or, you know, we have a daughter or something, she's going to have, um, you know, fewer rights if we move to that state. That's a decision we're going to have to make. Yeah, you have means. Um, it's not a lot, Sue. It doesn't require a lot, but it certainly is for poor people, you know, having to travel across state lines or gas money and the cost of it is is a leap for some folks especially in big states like Texas, is my point. You gotta yeah. base it on inflation and the economy. What did James Carville say? It's the economy, stupid. Yeah. Um, a, I like that they're quoting James Carville. Uh, secondly, we're not basing it on, you know, like eliminating the other factors and this is the only one. It's just when it comes to, everybody else is motivated for regular reasons. But if you're trying to turn out a, a larger crowd around a specific issue, you hit it with the ads. That's all. Women, women and also crime. face uh, the grocery crime bills rampant. and gas. Women, women face grocery bills and gas. Like, they don't care about their rights. They're more worried about the price of eggs than their own eggs. Spills. I think, I think we have the most right. unsafe country we've ever had. We have the most unsafe country we have ever had. Not technically, but you look at people in these Democrat run cities, they're being mugged and knocked over and whacked behind the head with a baseball bat. And <laughs> Jesus, I, uh, I, I don't know about you, but I, I've been in a lot of democratically run cities. But we were just in Chicago and I I literally saw no one being whacked on the head with a baseball bat. Several days. We did a lot of walking around. Shot and stores are being looted all over the country in Democrat-run cities. This fucker lives on a golf course and can, and has no idea what the rest of the country is like. He literally only sees, like, uh, the rest of the country via videos of crime on his phone. I think that's a big deal, and I think the border is a big deal. And inflation... And I mean, isn't it the same thing? They're dumping criminals into the state. And those people run to Democrat-run cities, which are sanctuary cities, and bonk people over the head with a bat and then try to join Major League Baseball, I guess. And the economy is very big, absolutely. And yet... And, and don't forget, here I am in Vegas. Look what just happened in the last 24 hours. We had the mass stabbing on the Vegas Strip in broad daylight. By, by some guy who stabbed four showgirls and then went on a stamping spree with four other tourists. Two of them are dead now. You know, this is going on in broad daylight on the world. Yeah, this isn't the first time shit like the, this has happened. Motherfucker, we... Okay, hold on. Um... It, it, can I, can I compare? Hold on. Where is he? I'm going to bring up the whole article. Um, Donald Trump was president of the United States when Stephen Paddock um, opened fire. Where well, here we go. Trump was fucking president when when Paddock opened fire 
on a crowd of people going to a concert in Vegas and killed 58 fucking people. You were there, Justin? Oi. Uh, my girlfriend was working uh, on the strip that night. Luckily, they were they were they had left already from Mandalay Bay. Um, this guy rolled in with a bunch of guns because you know, good guy with a gun, right? Locked himself in a room and opened fire. The, yes, there was a stabbing. You know what? There was also hold on. Um, let's see. Let me see if I can do this. Let me show you something. Um, let's see. There you go. One second. Here you go. China's stab. Xi Jinping's top of his game, right? What? I hope he tell. I hope Trump tells his fucking story about. Um, no, no, we no have drug problem. Um, that bullshit thing he's doing. Okay. China's stabbing problem. Why are mass knife attacks so common? Wednesday's knife attack is the latest in a series of such incidents. This is uh, in August uh, that have led to 100 deaths in the past decade. It's often found that the common culprit is, uh, is a lack of mental health infrastructure and more than 100 million people in dire need of it. Three people were left dead and six others wounded as a gangster wearing a cap and a mask stormed a kindergarten stormed a kindergarten and attacked people with a knife in southeast China's Jiangxi province. Wednesday's knife attack is the latest series of such attacks that have led to 100 deaths in the past decades, a decade according to a report by The Independent. By the way, these are the only reported ones. This happens all the fucking time. Famous Vegas Strip. All hell is broken loose. In no, it hasn't. It didn't set off a trend of mass fucking stabbings. You know what happened after that? The cops came, arrested the dude. The 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 victims were treated or taken away, and the uh, people were an hour and a half later were walking by the area, going, "What was that? What's the tape? What happened there?" Like it's a giant city with a lot of tourists. Democrat-run cities all over this country. You're not safe. Your kids aren't safe. Your spouse isn't yep. safe. You're only safe inside the, the Patriot wing of a Barnes and Nobles where I am live streaming from downtown Vegas. That is a Republican issue. And we got to drum it home. Yeah, drum it home. Drum it, drum it right into your home. 24 hours a day. Yep. <laughs> that's, that seems a bit much. Safety, the border, that's a big part of safety. Yeah, yeah. I mean, most of these criminals are, you know, foreigners. Uh, drugs pouring into our country. You know, we had it down to a 32-year low, and it was going to get much better because I built so much of the wall, despite all the opposition from the Democrats, 11 different lawsuits. But I built so much of the wall and completed the big section, and then we were... I, I love that he had to change the storyline. Adding more could have been done in three weeks. They could have been oh. had it completed, but they didn't want to complete it. Now they're completing it. But the wall really... It was two gates. made a difference. We had the safest border... Because of COVID. In the history of our country. By because of COVID. Far the safest border. Because we had more cases than Mexico did. Really? It was literally more dangerous. Amazing. What a shame. Hal, I bet you would not go out at night downtown Chicago. Uh, Starbird, I literally did. Multiple times. Yes, I would. When you look at what's happened to our country in two years. All right. That was part one. Part Oh, there's a part two. Great. Next, that's later. I'm way over time. Uh, this is just how this happens. All right, hold on one second. Um, you're watching House Parks Mega Worldwide. Um, I'm I live stream every day, and they put these clips up, and I do the whole fucking thing. 